time for the Gore and More podcast. <laughs> gonna have a good time. Gonna have a good time. Yeah, we're gonna have a good time. We're going on now. A ball break, ball break. walking hand in hand in the moonlight. And the moon. We'll be the sweet soul there. I swear we'll never part. We're going on now. A ball break, ball break. running in the sand. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Gormore Podcast. This is your host, the most, TJ Bowser, and joining me today is the lovely Rusty Swimmer. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you'd say lovely. I mean, Joey B wasn't the loveliest person in the world, you know. One of the coolest, so. though. One of the coolest. <laughs> <gasps> Thank you so much. I'll give you the $50 later. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so we ain't going to waste much time. We're going to get right into your interview. So what inspired you to get into acting and not some other profession? Um, I am obsessed with human behavior, obsessed with it. And I think that the schooling to be a psychiatrist or a psychologist was way too much for me. So, and, um, I just love human behavior and people and why they do things. I'm a curious, curious human being. And so that's basically how it started. Um, and, uh, I've, as long as I have, uh, been alive. I think that's all I ever wanted to do ever, ever. Awesome. So that's when I, you know, I started at birth, I think. Yeah. Yep. Were you a fan of the Friday, the 13th franchise prior to getting your role in Jason goes to hell? I was actually a fan cause I'm an old piece of shit. <laughs> I was, um, I was a fan of, um, Halloween, and it came out when I was high in high school. Yeah, I do the math, people. Um, and uh, Halloween, I saw probably in the movie theater about five or six times. And uh, we could uh, quote everything that Donald Pleasance did because we thought he was so damn funny. And uh, so I was a fan of that stuff. But more importantly, my best friends were very, very obsessed with horror films and they loved the Friday the 13th franchises. And one of them is an actress, also Virginia Madsen, who we grew up together. And um, she's of the Candyman fame. And um, uh, I, I, when I got the chance to audition for Friday the 13th, I thought, oh, my best friends, Virginia and Jean, are going to be, I've got to get this for them, <laughs> right? I got to get this for them. And uh, so that's where my fandom is in, 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 you know, in the beginning of that when I started out. Right. Yes. Yeah. What yeah. was it like to work with Adam Marcus on Jason goes to hell? So fun. It was like when you're kids and you're totally playing dress up and you're like, okay, you play the restaurant owner and I'm going to be the monster, but I'm going to be like, and then he's like, okay, go. And so we had a ball and we'd laugh so hard. And he was also so open, like he was void of any, any ego, uh, because I'd say, what do you think about this line? How about if I tra change this? We're like, you know, nobody's going to touch that fucking baby. I said, um, nobody's going to touch that fucking ray of sunshine. He was like, yep, let's do it. You know, <laughs> and um, it was just really, uh, it was really fun, really open, really creative. He's a very creative soul. And uh, it was a blast. We had so much fun. It was a crime, actually. Yeah. Can you talk more about your experience filming the diner scenes? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, I'm sure you know this because you guys, you fans, like, are so good with detail. It was in an old, uh, you know, car dealership yes. in Thousand yes. Oaks, right? And um, the set design was so brilliant. Um, and I had been a waitress for five million years. Well, fourteen in in in. Uh, in, in human life, five million in my mind. Um, so I was a waitress for a long, long time. So I felt really right at home 
um, especially with Leslie Jordan, the two of us were, you know, finding props in there and just playing with those. And he's a, what we call a prop whore. <laughs> and um, Leslie Jordan is a prop whore. And I kind of learned to be a slight prop whore, maybe a prop slut would be more <laughs> the term, uh, <laughs> right? Because I think he got paid for it and I didn't for a while. Oh. So, uh, right, right, right. So, so um, we just had a ball just being in that diner. Um, because it was, you know, essentially it was our diner, right? It was my diner. It was called Joey B's, right? And so, uh, um, I I was like, this is my place, people. And, um, so I felt very, very at home. And we just, you know, it was just really fun to be in the diner. Cause that's, I think, if I'm correct, that was the only time you ever saw us was when we were in the diner, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. So there it was. We did a convention earlier this year, and on the front yeah. of our table, we hung uh, the Jason is dead two-for-one burger sale sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very proud of that. I was very proud of that, especially because I knew I had some good nails, Yeah, you know, good fingernails. And I was like, I can jam on this, man, you know? And uh, I remember, like, ha- making sure that I had the good, what they call, a, you know, the natural cocaine spoon, your <laughs> pinky fingernail, right? And so, not that I did cocaine, I didn't, but that's a, you know, so uh, it, 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 you know, so I was like, I, I got the cocaine spoon here, let's do this, you know? And uh, I love that you had that sign. That's fantastic. That's great. Final question from Jason Goes to Hell. Do you have a favorite set story? Um, you know, uh, I have to say there, I had a day off and my sisters came to visit and, uh, I have three sisters. They are my life. They are everything to me. They're my best friends. They're hilarious. I'm not the funny one, by the way, I'm the most serious (laughs) one of my sisters. They're so funny that there's been a few times I've had to change my underwear. I'm just saying, okay. Anyway, (laughs) Ooh, did I say that out loud? Okay. Anyway, um, so uh we um they came to the set and they had never really been on a set let alone a horror film set mm-hmm. and there's Stephen Culp with all of his organs out right <laughs> They came to the set on that day and, you know, he's sitting having a cup of coffee with his organs out, you know, and my sisters were like, what the hell is going on? Right. And, um, my little sister, when I was younger, she would always say, and she would always kind of be my director. And I always say that she was my first teacher or my first director. And, um, cause I would do these really crazy characters. I mean, that's where Joey B kind of comes from because I was imitating Chicago guys, right? Um, and, uh, she she would be like, okay, do the Chicago guy and then this other character and then pretend you're in this place. Right. So, (laughs) so that's kind of where I like learned uh, how to do all that stuff. And, um, just to entertain my little sister. And so there she is in video village with Adam, right? And Adam, like I said, not having an ego was like, what do you think of that take? Right. And so my <laughs> sisters like are not shy. And my sisters were like, uh, uh, you, you know what you can do there? If he walks a little bit weirder there, you know, and Adam would be like, yeah, yeah, dude, walk a little bit weirder, you know. <laughs> and it was so great to have my sisters on there. And I wasn't even working that day, which is even funnier. I just wanted them to see what a set was like. And uh, that was one of my favorite days on the set. And also when we died, that was really fun. <laughs> um, when I was lying on the ground and I was like so excited that my glasses were askew, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted them askew. I thought it was really funny because um, it reminds me of like that old film Battleship Potemkin, you know, with the broken glasses, boom, you know, and it's, a uh, you know, this old, old ass film. And um, so I wanted to have that. And there I am lying on a, you know a kitchen mat for, you know, a few hours because it was a really hard shot to get because it was like a steady cam shot and, you know, they're going through all of that. And, um, I, to me, it was a great challenge. Like, Ooh, how long can I stay still and pretend that I'm not breathing? You know, um, (laughs) I know I'm so weird. I'm so weird, but, um, actors are weird. You know that. So, uh, that's basically what, uh, that was another day that was really fun, just watching that. Oh yeah, and in the back, in the back, uh, when we had to start 
shooting guns and watching Allison Smith kill it with her gun, you know? Yeah. That was funny. That was funny to me. Yeah. So um, that was fun. Those are things. And then, of course, Leslie and I just joking around. And I think Leslie and I have done three films together. And he's just a delight, you know? Just a delight. Yeah. You have worked in both film and television. Which do you prefer and why? I prefer film. Nice question, dude. Um, I prefer film. To me, it's more of an actor's medium than TV. I think TV is more of a writer's medium and film is more of a cinematographer's medium. And I love the fact that I can paint a picture more than I like uh, when I don't say stuff rather than when I do say stuff. I like (laughs) reacting rather than, yeah. And so, um, and that's usually what my jam is. You know, um, uh, Jason Goes to Hell was a different thing for me in the sense that I was talking a lot. And usually in films that I'm doing, they, they kind of have like the lead actor talking, then the audience, we don't know if how they're reacting. Mm-hmm. And then they cut to me reacting and then they go, oh, this is how we're supposed to react. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. And so I always say that that's usually my job, you know. So um, this uh, I do like film so much more. It's more creative to I find to the actor. And that's just my opinion. Yeah. Awesome. So in reference to The Perfect Storm. Uh, yes, sir. What was your approach to playing the character Big Red? Uh, you know, um, I uh, the approach was um, I'm I'm all about um, doing uh, research in those places of who this person really is. Like I said, human behavior is a huge thing for me, and so uh, John Hawks and I specifically had an advantage because we weren't famous like everybody else in that movie was <laughs> and so when we came to the to Gloucester where the whole thing really took place we had about two weeks to really do what we needed to do before our first scene and so we pretended we were people from you know Essex over you know two towns over right <laughs> and uh and uh uh, we even played on one of the softball teams for a bit. Okay. Uh, and so they thought that we were kind of, we weren't from Gloucester, but we were from Essex over there, right? And so uh, <laughs> we um, we kind of did that. And then, of course, we disappointed the shit out of them when they saw us on the set. Like, oh, my God, you took advantage of us. But we were like, no, we want to respect you. Uh-huh. We don't. We we want to show the dignity and the integrity of the people from Gloucester, right? And so that's kind of how we went about it. And, you know, John Hawks is just, I mean, come on, like the greatest actor of all time, you know, one of them, you know? And so all I really had to do was react to him because he fucking kills it, man. <laughs> so, yeah. And um, so that was kind of our approach to it and um we really liked each other anyway because both of us were from the midwest oh, okay. he's from minnesota i'm from illinois and we have a kind of a practical way about us and so he and i both had that you know practicality we had a lot in common and um so it was easy to you know and i put in air quotes fall in love right mm, yeah and so that's kind of where we went with that but we, we were really, really concerned about making sure that these people were, were, you know, that when people from Gloucester saw the movie or people that knew Gloucester said, oh, those people are from Gloucester. And that's always been my M.O. anyway, mm-hmm. is that I don't want anybody to say this is Rusty Schwimmer as. It's always, isn't she from there? Oh, they got a real person. <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and that's my mo that's that's that thing and it's something that i'm very proud and um i love it i love what i do because of that you know because they think that they just got the real person from wherever it was right yes so like for instance there was <laughs> i think at the perfect storm premiere there was an executive from warner brothers and he said to me Oh, you came all the way from Boston? (laughs) And the funniest part was I said, dude, I did Twister for you and Little Princess for you also. And he's like, 
oh God. And he was horrified. And I had to calm him down and say, no, actually that was the ultimate compliment. Yeah. The the ultimate, right? Um, Because, you know, there's this preconceived notion and a a stereotype of an actor having a big ego and wanting to be noticed and needing attention, Mm -hmm. didn't get enough as a child, blah, 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 blah. Most actors I know don't have that. They don't, they don't have that going on. You know, we just want to play dress up for God's (laughs) sake. Yes. You know? (laughs) Yeah. So there it is. Do you remember how you got that role in Perfect Storm? Um, yeah, this is, this is the wild thing a lot of people don't know about. Um, so I get a call from my agent and, uh, says, she says to me, uh, you, uh, they want you to go in for this role. And I'm, I read the script and I'm reading the part of Big Red and I'm like, my God, this is like, this is like in my wheelhouse, like, like scary in my wheelhouse, (laughs) wheelhouse, right? Because it's like the blue collar chick with the heart of gold that tells it like it is, yeah. you know, is kind of in my wheelhouse, right? So uh, um, I read the script and I was like, this is amazing, unbelievable. And I look to see who wrote it. And it was Bill Whitliff, who seven years earlier or six years earlier, I had done a Western for him called Ned Blessing. Mm. And uh, he... This is the only part, Big Red is the only part that is fictional. Everybody else is a, a real person, right? Mm-hmm. That had existed. Big Red did not exist. She was a combination of a whole bunch of townspeople. And he decided to put that in there. And he wrote it for me in mind. But at the time, it's a huge film with all these movie stars mm-hmm. that they're like, Rusty who? We want Cameron Mannheim, which I don't blame them for. Because Cameron at the time was at the practice and she had, she was very famous at the time and they wanted Cameron Mannheim. But Bill said in his most humble way, he just passed away last year, rest his soul. And, um, he said to Wolfgang Peterson, he said, I think you should see this woman, Rusty Schwimmer. And he said, Oh, why do you think so? And he said, Well, check out the lady that was in Twister. He didn't even say, Ah, uh, she did a Western for me. She did any of that. He didn't say any of that. He said, Check out the lady that did Twister. And Wolfgang said to me in the first meeting, in his very Bavarian accent, he said, Um, so he asked me to take a look at you and for a twister. And I uh I happened, you know, right? And he 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 Right. And he um, he would he got this like fancy, you know, this is 1996 when it came out. Twister came out Uh 97, probably went on video. And um, that was a pre DVD people. And um, I think uh, it might have been Laserdisc or something. And he got this whole home studio and then he got the big ultrasound and all, you know, not ultrasound. What is that called? Um, Surround sound, yeah. not ultrasound. Hi, how you doing? Um, I'm an old piece of shit. Okay, so he he got this big surround sound. So he would show my scene from Twister to his friends over and over and over again. So he goes, I must have seen you thousands of times. And I was like, cool, you know. And then uh, they put John and I together. He interviewed all of us first to see if we were just nice people. Right. Mm -hmm. Which I love about that, about Wolfgang, is that he wants to make sure, first of all, that you're just a good person, that you're a good hang, you know. And um, so then he interviewed me first and then he and then they said, we want to put you together with this guy, John Hawks. And um, at the time, John and I had the same agent. So the night before we auditioned, we got together in a bar uh, uh, in L.A. and hung out. And like, you know, rehearsed. But of course, the next day we come in like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. You know, being all covert, like we didn't rehearse or anything. I don't know why we did that. But I think it's just we just wanted to be sneaky. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then we did the scene together. You know, we auditioned for the scene and uh, we did, you know, uh, one of the bar scenes. And um, that was it. And then, oh, yeah. At the time, Mel Gibson was set to play George Clooney's part. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah. But then the Patriot went over 
And so then they got George. So in the meantime, I think I auditioned. I don't know about the timeline, but it was a long. I auditioned probably in March or April and didn't find out until September. Oh, wow. (laughs) So I was like, man, come on, man, you know. And uh, uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of how it went. That's how it went. Can't believe I remember all that shit. All right. (laughs) That's good, though. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) thank you. (laughs) So you did a movie that had, I would like to think, has a crazy set. What was it like on the set of The Belko Experiment? Oh, he, (laughs) oh, God, we had way too much fun. (laughs) Way too much fun. Um, I am uh, a lot of times in uh, the entertainment industry, uh, you get what you call repeat customers, right? And that's what Bill Whitliff was. He was like a repeat customer. And that's why he wrote Perfect Storm, you know, that that part with me in mind. Uh, James Gunn and I are friends. And um, his little brother, Sean Gunn, is one of my closest friends and has been for years. And so if you're friends with one Gunn brother, you have to be friends with all of them. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so James uh, wanted to... Because we were in Colombia, we were in Bogota, Colombia, he wanted to hire a lot of his friends because he also knew that it was a huge ensemble cast. He also knows that I love an ensemble cast and I'm a team player. I like that stuff, you know. I grew up playing sports. I like that, you know. So uh, um, so when we all came, I mean, most of those people were already friends of mine, right? So like Sean Gunn, Valentine Mealy, um, uh, Dave Dasmalchin, these are all friends of mine and friends of uh, of of James, mm-hmm. and so and Rooker, crazy ass Rooker, and uh, um, so when we were there, we just had a ball. I mean, when we'd have a day off, all of us, like all twenty of us, would go out in a in a in like as if we were like a gang you know, and went out and watched soccer tournaments and went out to dinner together. And we just had a ball and having, and and Greg McLean, who is just delightful of the Wolf Creek fame, all you wonderful horror film people out there. um, He was so much fun and was so ready to play. And James was with us for a little bit too, because he was writing, I think guardians of the galaxy three at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, he was just with us for a little while, but we had a ball and um, uh, Greg just really knew what he was doing, really had a good fun. We had a really good fun time and the blood and guts was so much fun and I was so excited to die. It was so <laughs> much fun. And I finally got to die at like three o'clock in the morning, um, you know, <laughs> and, and it was just, you know, the cool thing where you've got like a tube up your back. Uh-huh. And, you know, you can feel the whoosh about to happen, you know, with the special effects. And uh, as soon as you have the woof, you know, the the whoosh happening, you know that you've got to be like, OK, my head exploded. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and so that's what, you know, that's what we did. But I was really excited to die. So fun. So, so fun. Yeah, we had a great time. Do you ever feel that you are sometimes typecast in your roles? You know, there's, it's an interesting question. I'm, it depends on the person, right? Um, I said earlier in this podcast, you know, the blue collar chick with the heart of gold, it tells it like it is. Um, uh, That happens a lot because of Perfect Storm. But then there's uh, other roles where, um, uh, because James knew me, James thought that uh, the playing the part of Peggy, Peggy uh, Displacia was uh, in Belco experiment was perfect for me because I was just a nice lady who is very protective of her people. And that's kind of who I am. So he thought that that's what I play all the time, the nice lady. And then I get uh, a lot of times I get typecast as the weird ass lady that, that does weird ass shit. <laughs> um, and strangely enough, um, if a lot of people know in the entertainment industry that I'm a very physical person mm-hmm. and they, I think it's kind of, and I see this, I know exactly who I am. Um, and I see that 
it's kind of stunning when you see a big person fucking running like a motherfucker, mm-hmm. right? And so um, I do a lot of physical roles like Lucifer. I beat the fuck out of, you know, um, the guy that plays Lucifer, Tom Ellis. And then I get tased. And I was like, let's do this <laughs> shit. Let's do this shit. And a lot of times when they have um, – a stunt double. I'm always disappointed because number one, they try to stuff that person. It looks like they're just stuffed, right? Yes. Rather than just large people, right? And then they never get the the hair color correct because it's real hair color. Mm-hmm. You know, it's real. And so it's not dyed, you know? And so it's this, I mean, it's dyed now, but you know, cause like I said, old piece of shit, <laughs> but, um, but <laughs> I think that's the third time I've said that. Yes. Good times. <laughs> um, and so uh, uh, I usually say, let me just try to do my own stunt. And I do. And I'm proud of it. Damn it. I'm Hell proud yeah. of it. Hell yeah. Yeah. And so um, that's another thing. They kind of all, always know, oh, she's a pretty physical person. So let's do that. And so I get typecast with that. But most of the time I get typecast as either crazy or super duper grounded. Right. Okay. And so, yeah. So there it is. It's fun, though. It's fun. Keep them guessing. You know. How did you get um, involved with the series, The Guardian? Oh, um, <clears throat> that's interesting. Um, uh, David Hollander, who is the um, uh, showrunner, who is also now the showrunner of Oh gosh, oh damn it, I don't know because I don't watch a lot of TV. Isn't that odd? Ironic. Um, <laughs> Uh, he, um, was a fan of, uh, perfect storm. A lot of people Uh that, that really kind of, even though I had been working for a long time before that, that kind of put me on the pop culture map, Mm -hmm. you know, unless you were a little girl and that was little princess or unless you were a horror fan, which of course was, you know, Jason goes to hell or Candyman or sleepwalkers, um, and that kind of stuff. So, uh, David was a fan of, uh, Perfect Storm, and he wrote the part of Barbara Ludzinski with me in mind, and that's how I came to be in that, you know. When it comes to your role in The Guardian, mm -hmm. what makes that Mm -hmm. different than the other series you have worked on? Uh, uh, she is, uh, more grounded than a lot of the other series that I worked on. Uh, like David E. Kelly hires me a lot to play the weird woman, Uh you know? Uh, like in Boston Legal, I had a, a, a false eye. And whenever my character got upset, the eye would pop out. <laughs> and so <laughs> so he always had me playing these weird, weird women. And so I did a lot of David E. Kelly things. And uh, Barbara was much more grounded, much more along the lines of Big Red Irene, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, that was kind of the difference, I think. Um, and series work is brutal. I mean, it's brutal. Uh, you have to be incredibly disciplined. Uh, um, it's a, it's almost like you got to be kind of like a ball player during the season, you know, a baseball player during the season. I make a lot of sports analogies, gotta be honest. (laughs) Okay. So, uh, so it's kind of brutal in that way. And it was, a, it was hard. It was hard, hard, hard work because you also had like big brother watching, which was the network. Right. Okay. And I'm a bit of a, uh, of a contrarian in a way. So I was like, you know, fuck the network kind of thing. So, (laughs) um, that, that was a challenge that it was like, no, play nice, you know, play nice. It's cool. But the big brother thing kind of was like, what the fuck is that? You know, but, um, I'm, it was a really good, um, adjustment to make. Right. So I had another tool in my, in, in, in my tool, toolkit. Right. And so that was, uh, that was interesting in that way uh, with the guardian. Yeah. Final question <clears throat> as an actor. Yes, sir. What do you yes. consider a strength that you bring to each role? Um, something that I had talked about with you, which is playing that person that everybody knows. Yes. Like, Oh, I know that person. I know, I know them. I know what they've done. Um, and, and bringing um, as something as truthful as possible. And, uh, so even if I do something like Joey B, there's a, uh, hopefully an honesty about her, right? Yes. And so, uh, so I try to do that. And that's, um, uh, I think that's my biggest strength and also being able to react without saying anything. A lot of your characters uh, are memorable. And, uh, 
to thank you to uh use an example when i did the promos for this episode on uh mm-hmm. social media a mm-hmm. lot of, i got a lot of feedback of people commenting like oh she was in perfect storm or she was in belco experiment people like mm-hmm. recognizing your character from specific movies because you just have that memorable quality about you and especially your roles do thank you appreciate that <laughs> It's a cool thing. I also think that they're so used to seeing people that look almost the same. Uh-huh. And because I look like most of America, <laughs> you know, I mean, let's be honest. I look like most of America. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any um, uh, plastic surgery yet. Um, <laughs> never say never. Um, no plastic surgery. I'm um, a more abundant woman, uh-huh. which is just like America, you know? And so uh, I think that that also helps of being memorable. And also uh, a lot of people that look like me, a lot of times uh, they're given roles that perpetuate bad self body image or as a sight gag or a joke. And I'm not that person. I can't do that. It, I, I, I can't sleep at night knowing that I don't want to perpetuate bad self body image. And so I think that's also what makes it memorable because I think no matter what, my characters have some sort of integrity going on. Right. Uh-huh. And so there's kind of that, you know. Um, I'm sorry. I'm a Virgo. I totally analyze. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so that's it, you know? So that's, uh, I think that's what makes it memorable. Well, thank um, you for yeah. doing this. This has been an excellent interview. I've, oh, your stories are the best. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I mean, I, I love what I do. I think you can, you know, find that out. And I think that's another reason why Adam and I get along so well as we really know how fortunate we are, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I think that's another reason why he and I get along so well and why I like him so much, you know, such a good dude. Would you uh, like to quote any of your Joey B lines for all the listening hellions out there? Well, uh, you know, nobody's going to touch that fucking ray of sunshine. <laughs> it's one. And um, uh, I think that's the biggest one that I think that it was really fun. And uh, there was a bunch of, there was one, I mean, because like I said, it's been like five million years since I did this. Um, I think that there was also one where I think I might have said the word fuck or fucking <laughs> like six times in one sentence. Right. <laughs> Yes. And I, do you know which one that is? I, I don't know. I what can't it is. remember it verbatim. <laughs> you know, he was like, he's going to be in the fucking singer. He's out and fucking, fucking do fucking, you know, something like that. Right. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I mean, I knew a lot of guys like that. I was really kind of playing a guy. Right. Yeah. And so uh, I just thought that, you know, Leslie and I were playing each other's beards. Right. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it was pretty funny. And um, so I think that's, you know, nobody's going to touch that fucking ray of sunshine <laughs> is the one that most people, if they come up to me, that's the thing that they remember. Right. That is awesome. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're fucking <laughs> welcome. <laughs> God damn it. All right. Jesus Christ, this fucking interview is fucking going to give me agita, okay? <laughs> well, thank you for coming on, Rusty. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, Gormore, talk to y'all later. Joey, please, just let me get the baby and we'll go. Shut the fuck up. You're worth a fucking felon. Oh, hey now, baby, watch your language. Fuck you. Fuck hey, God, God. God. Ah. Now look what you're fucking done. Give me the baby, Joey. Fuck you. Oh. Sorry. <laughs>